Hello and welcome to the Tank Club. Today we're going to be looking at my top 10 tank sets for the High Isle chapter. Starting off in number 10, I couldn't quite make up my mind, so I've got like a couple of different optional gear sets that you might want to use. So we've got Defile Dragon, Elemental Catalyst, War Machine, and Olorime. And the reason why I've got those kind of sets is because they're all very kind of... They're just used in certain situations. Defile Dragon, an Adpul set. Elemental Catalyst, not really a tank set anymore, but it could be used in certain situations like Vass. War Machine, again, not a widely used set. Could be used for dungeons, could be used again as the off-tank in Vass. And Olorime is a good dungeon set if you've got no healer, and also sometimes in certain trial situations. In number nine, we've got the Master Sun and Board, the Puncturing Remedy set. This is a wonderful set in terms of self-healing. So this can be used in so many different situations because we've got so many gear sets as a tank that can be used on one bar. What that means is we can use the Master's One-Handed Shield, and this is great for boss fights where you're taking a lot of damage, where you want to push to the resistance cap, you can do it without needing the use of reinforced gear and going with the Lady Munda Stone and things like that. You just go into the resistance cap with the Master One-Handed Shield. So it's a really good set, and it's really good for high damage situations. Definitely pick that up from Dragon Star Arena. The Worm's Raymond set, the Worm Cult set. This is a wonderful set as well for especially newer groups. It's somewhat easy to farm. It comes from Vaults of Madness. It gives you so much sustain and it gives you group sustain as well. So any kind of time you as a tanker progress in new content, you want to be using this. If your groups progress in new content, you want to be using this. A lot of the time in those newer groups where if you're in a new environment where people aren't really confident and know what they're doing, then Worm Cult is very helpful. Having sustain means that people could output more DPS because they're not having to heavy attack as much as a tank. Having more magicka recovery is fantastic as well because we're able to cast more spells and more skills and more healing and more shields and things like that. So it's a good set all round for that kind of environment. Okay, number seven, we've got the Vatashran one hand and shield, the Void Bash set. This is, for me, an absolutely essential piece of gear for every single class of tank for dungeon content. This is going to make your life extremely easy. I've got videos on how to do ad pulls really, really easily, really, really well by combining Void Bash, by combining Pulsar and Blockade on every single class to get lots of debuffs and buffs and how to use this efficiently. And that is, honestly, it's the easiest way of pulling in enemies. Rather than chaining one enemy at a time and pulling things in one by one to get it into a stack, you can use the one hand and shield of this set, the Void Bash set, to just pull everything in in one button. And it just makes dungeon content incredibly simple on those ad pulls. It is a vital piece of gear. It saves you so much time and effort and resources by just using this wonderful piece of gear. So this is the Vatashron 100 Shield, the Void Bash set. Number six, we've got Saxilil Champion. Still a decent set. I don't like it as much nowadays. I think there's other options that I prefer personally, but it's still really really strong and there's definitely certain situations where it's much better than other gear sets so the first one that springs to mind for me is definitely things like progression runs of vcr so when you're doing cloud rest as like progression runs the fact that you can like barrier through that and use sacks can be a good option other situations such as um, asylum sanctorium again one of the reasons you'd use it there is because you have a low major force uptime in general. So having a higher major force uptime is obviously very beneficial to your group. Having major force with a higher uptime is the reason why we'd use Sax now. It's because we need that higher major force output that we would get from Sax. Now some problems you can get though is you might as well just use a horn if you're using turning tide and you're not getting um you're not using your ultimate with more than like let's say 250 you're not really going to benefit from that much more major force so some arguments will be that sax will provide a higher major force up time for a group but on the flip side if you're using your ult on cooldown then you're not really going to be getting more than you would have done with a horn anyway so you kind of depends on your group it is a very good safety set so you can use sax with barriers to get through content if you are in a new progression beginner group or something like that so it's going to help you get through that content so this is a good set to provide protection, but also provide additional damage. And in groups that are able to really, really build ultimate fast, if you're somebody who can build ultimate very, very quickly and you're using sacks, then it could help boost your group's major force up time as well. Next, we've got Crimson Oath. And this is 
somewhat a decent set. It really depends. If your group's got somebody using Alkosh, then you won't need it for boss fights. Crimson has a range of functionality. It's good for ad pulls. It's good for people who are new to tanking and maybe don't keep a good uptime on their infused Crusher Enchant. It's good for groups nowadays that are using more hybrid builds, especially if that's happening and you don't have Alkosh, you're going to be under the pen cap. So there's a lot of different things to consider when we're looking at Crimson Oath. So it can be very useful on boss fights. If you have damage dealers using medium armor, but then you don't have Alkosh and you don't have pen gear, this would be an option. When there's multiple different adds to deal with, again, it can be a very good option. Ad pulls, it's great. Lots of benefits from using Crimson Oath. You just got to use it depending on, on your group. This is one of the problems with figuring out how to set up a tank build. It's very dependent on what your group need and how your group is set up. So it's very difficult to suggest like one setup for one certain trial because it's going to vary depending on the experience level, your group's performance level, and what sort of knowledge your group has. Okay, in four, we've got Powerful Assault, the age old gear set that is still going strong now. Obviously, it got updated a couple of patches ago. It is a much better set nowadays. You make sure your group's stacked. You double cast a assault ability. You provide them with a very good group buff with additional weapon and spell damage. Dungeon content, it's very good again because it's one of the highest amounts of weapon and spell damage that you can provide from a gear set. So it's a strong piece of gear. In trial content, it can be difficult in certain situations to get this in everybody when you're in fights where people aren't stacked very well, when your group's very spread out. But generally, in a lot of fights, your group can pull really close, you can stack up, you can get it on everybody. So it's a very, very important trial set. It's a very good dungeon set. It's good for dungeons and things like that. So it's worth picking up your powerful assault. Number three, we've got Pearlescent Ward. Brand new set with High Isle. Really good set for the main reason that it's got zero micromanagement. When you compare it to PA, PA has obviously got a really high level of micromanagement. Every 10 seconds, you've got a double cast and assault ability in a trial. In a dungeon, obviously, you still have to cast once every 10 seconds. So it does require micromanagement. Pearlescent Ward, zero micromanagement. It's just an active buff the whole time. So it's going to be good for you for your experience groups to get an additional damage buff, and it's going to be good for your beginner groups because it's also got that defensive twist to it where you're going to get damage reduction based on people being dead. It's going to give you that chance to recover fights and get through fights that maybe you wouldn't have been able to before because the damage was too high. The incoming damage was too high and you just couldn't get the heals or you couldn't get the resurrections, but now maybe you'll be able to because you'll have the damage reduction thanks to this gear set. So Pearlescent Ward is number three. Number two, always been one of my favorite tank sets, Yolnacrin, the claw of Yolnacrin set from Sunspire. It's just always been a fantastic set. It's always had useful benefits on the one to four piece, the five piece, provides a really nice group buff. The fact that it procs off Taunt, which is something you're gonna be naturally doing anyway. Again, it's got that no micromanagement aspect to it, which makes it really, really good. So Yolnacrin has always been a good set. It's good for all environments. So for example, Trials main tank, it's always used there. It's always good for dungeons if you are kind of a little bit inexperienced. So you don't have to use Yolnacrin for dungeons, but when you're in that situation where you've got to focus on mechanics, and you can still provide a damage buff and use Yolnacrin. When you go into content like Black Rose Prison, where it requires kind of a lot of movement, a lot of dealing with different ads in different kinds of ways and stacking and chaining and pulling things in, then obviously it's a really good situation there to use it because you just want to have something that is going to be active with very little effort. So Yolnacrin, still a great gear set. You definitely want to be picking this up and investing into it because it's a good gear set. And number one, we've got Turning Tide. This set came into the game last patch and it just makes things incredibly easy for you grouping yourself as a tank. So when you go into a dungeon or a trial, you wear Turning Tide. On the ad pulls, you have it active on every single ad pull. So you walk into an ad pull, you proc it. On the stack, everything has got major vulnerability. You go onto the next ad pull, you do the same again. Onto the next one, the same again. It's very consistent. It means that you don't have to have people trying to rush to build ultimate. You, you, damage dealers can use other ultimates instead of a Colossus. It's very consistent in that regards. When you get onto boss fights, it's good on most boss fights, but not every boss fight. So when you consider something like Asylum Sanctorium, you can be 20, 30 seconds without being hit. 
and that can create a problem where you're not able to proc it and not able to put it on the boss. So in that situation, it's not always good. Could still be used by groups with no necros, but typically in that situation it's too unreliable. But then there's other situations, or should I say most other situations, where you can activate this on a boss very, very easily. And you can also maintain a very high uptime, especially in combination with Warhorn and Nazare. So you combine the three things together and you're able to get huge uptimes. And it just means that you might only need one Colossus. If you are very, very good at using this set and timing it, you'll need zero Colossus. As long as you're able to build ultimate fast and combining it with that Nazare. So it's a really good tank set just because it's providing that major vulnerability on every single ad pull. In dungeon content, it's the same story. You walk into an ad pull, you can proc it. It's the same for Black Rose Prison. You chain everything in, you proc it. It just, it's always there. So there's a lot of situations where you would have not had major vulnerability before and you'll be able to get it without any effort right now. So like, a, like I say, in dungeon content, you wouldn't have had major vulnerability on every ad pull. In Black Rose Prison, you wouldn't have had that major vulnerability on every single ad pull, but now you can. And on those boss fights, you can pretty much get a higher uptime than you would do for most groups, with, even if they were using Colossus, because unless it's a really organized group, you probably would have had some major vulnerability downtime because you didn't have enough Colossus or you're not very good at timing Colossus or there's not enough people playing Necro. Those kind of problems persist in many, many groups, especially on the lower end of the trial spectrum. So it's a really good set and definitely one that you should pick up and invest in. So that is my top 10 gear sets for High Isle. Make sure you grab them, make sure you use them and enjoy the patch guys. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye bye for now.